Today's webinar is going to be about uh, selecting the right microscope for your um, age group or grade level. Uh, what we're going to do is go through the different types of microscopes and also um, after selection we'll go through a few cleaning tips and adjustment tips in case you have microscopes now that um, aren't working properly and maybe uh, you know with a few tips I can show you how to clean them and adjust them to get them working again in your classroom. So we're going to start with um, compound microscopes. Now, Compound microscopes are um, for slides only, they're high magnification. Generally, a standard um, compound microscope will have a 4, 10, and 40x objective, which will give you magnifications of 40, 100, and 40. Uh, typically, that's all the magnification you will need from K through 10, maybe even K through 12th grade. And when you get um, to the higher levels, you may also need the 100x oil immersion, but we'll get to that after the elementary, elementary model. So what we have here is a elementary model. It is smaller than your standard microscope. If you can see side by side, you'll notice there's quite a difference in size. So it's better for the smaller students with smaller hands. This is typically good for kindergarten through sixth grade, but can uh, be used right up through eighth grade. So the benefits of it are, it's easier to use, it's smaller for the smaller students, um, and then a disadvantage would be that the optics are smaller also on it, so your field of view is gonna be a little smaller. But basically what you get is a 10X eyepiece, a 4, 10, and 40x objective, and you get your magnification by multiplying your objective by your eyepiece. And then there are a few different stage types. On our elementary models, we have the rotating stage, and what that does is, I don't know if you can, how clearly you can see, but instead of moving the stage with your stage clips, the stage itself rotates but the center of your slide will not rotate out of the field of view. So that's super handy for younger students who when you move the slide, it just zooms everything out of focus. This model is a cordless LED model, so it has a um, LED light pack. It just clicks into there, and then it, has a, it comes with a charging cord to charge that up. But the, the LED is nice because it never heats up and it lasts a really long time. So um, you don't have to worry about students burn, burning themselves and you rarely have to change the bulb. Um, one of the important things to know about microscopes is that magnification is fairly cheap. You can get it in, inexpensively, but uh, resolution that's how well the lenses distinguish the uh, distinguish what's on the slide. That is where your expense comes in. So um, you may have a a microscope with 410 and 40 and want to throw a 100x objective on there, but if you don't have the correct optics to go with it, you're not going to get resolution. So it's going to make it um, really a waste of money because you won't get a clear image. So the micro the um, Elementary scopes, like I said, generally smaller, 410 and 40X. You can get them LED corded or cordless. They have the rotatable stage, stage clips. This model has coarse and fine adjustment, but a lot of the elementary models will just have a coarse focus knob. Are there any questions on elementary size? So then the next model up would be a standard compound. And what you're going to get there is basically you have the same features of the elementary but on a larger scale. So you'll notice the, the eyepieces a lot larger than on the smaller one. 
And what that does is it gives you a, a larger field of view or what you're seeing on the um, slide, like I like to use a flea as comparison. In a standard microscope under 4X, you'll see a whole flea on a slide. On an elementary model, you're, you're gonna see just like a wing or a, a portion of that flea, maybe half of it. So you definitely get uh, a bigger image with the full-size microscope. The stage differences on the full size, this is a stationary stage, it doesn't move. Comes with stage clips. So when you want to adjust your slide under the microscope, you have to move it with your, um, move it with your hands, which again, sometimes that'll cause you to zoom it out of um, reach. You can get a mechanical stage for a standard microscope. And when I show you the advanced microscope, you'll see how the um, mechanical stage fits on there. So with your standard 410 and 40X microscope, on the stage, there's gonna be a condenser. The standard condenser is a 0.65, and it's a single glass lens in the middle of the stage. It doesn't move, it's fixed in there and your maximum magnification you're gonna be able to get with that condenser is 650 times. So you multiply your condenser by 1,000 and that's your maximum magnification. So that goes back to where if you had this microscope and tried to add a 100X objective, you would not get a clear image because you don't have enough, um, a powerful enough condenser lens. So the condenser, there is also on an advanced model would look just like this, but it, would all, it wouldn't have a fixed lens. You would have a two-piece lens underneath, similar to this, and it would move up and down, and it's a two-lens system condenser, and that's a 1.25, so you can use the 100X with that. And 100X always... Um, requires oil immersion. Other options for the compound microscope would be coarse focus or coarse and fine focus. Some microscopes have them on separate axis. This is called rack and pinion. And some will have it on the same axis. This is called coaxial. Uh, one is, no one is better than the other. It's just a matter of preference. So if you're switching from coarse to fine, you have to move your hands with the separate. And when you're switching on the coaxial, you just have to slide your hand out. So it's a little easier, but both work just as well. And it's really just a matter of, of preference. Um, different lighting options on all of them. You can get tungsten, you can get LED. There's corded and cordless options with the LED. Um, you can, so this is a monocular microscope, which means it has one eyepiece. You can get a uh, dual view, which would have this one going at a 40 degree angle. I'm gonna move it away from me a little so you can see. And then it would have another one going straight up, either for a second person viewing or to add a camera. And then there's also binocular. Binocular viewing is more for advanced studies. You want to have a binocular head. Um, if you're going to be looking through the microscope for a long time, it uh, relieves eye strain. And that's only going to come on your higher end microscopes, the binocular. And typically, anytime you get a binocular, you're going to have a 410, 40, and 100x objective. You're going to have the 1.25 Abbey condenser, so you can use the higher magnification. You will have a built-in mechanical stage, which is a slide holder with its own XY axis, so you can find your image using that and you can mark it on the XY axis and always go to the same spot on the slide if you need to. It makes moving and um, handling the slide much easier. And you will also get what's uh, called a rheostat or a dimmer. 
And what that does is controls the light uh, intensity coming through the microscope. Um, any questions on why you would get, or on the age group for the three microscopes, or um, any features you would need for certain labs or techniques? The question is, which ones have a pointer in the eyepiece, and if they don't come with it by default, can you purchase it separately to add it up? Okay. Um, all the ones that we have here today are Boreal microscopes, and they do come with a pointer in the eyepiece, if it's a monocular. Um, the eyepieces are held in by a set screw, and you would loosen the set screw and take it out. The pointer is located in here. If you don't want the pointer, you can unscrew it, remove the pointer out of there, and just screw it back together. Um, if you get a different model that doesn't have a pointer, we do sell pointers separately. You just need to know the diameter of your eyepiece, the inner diameter, and you could order those. So um, pointers are easy to add or take away. Binocular scopes don't generally come with a pointer because you would see it through one eyepiece and not the other because they would be in two different positions. But you can buy a single eyepiece pointer for one or the other eyepieces. You wouldn't use two. Any other feature questions? What is the best scope option for a homeschooler? Homeschooler, your best option would most likely be a standard 41040X full-size microscope. Um, these microscopes, they're simple to use, they're durable, and really they, um, they can take you right up through 12th grade. Um, you need 100x objectives to view things like bacteria and, um, and some germs, but unless you're in AP, you really don't need the 100x objective. So a standard compound should get you straight through K-12.